This is Casey in Florida, still. Today we're gonna make, uh, everybody says my famous oatmeal cake, but it was my grandmother's recipe and it's been tweaked over the years. So here we go. <clears throat> These will be all the ingredients. The number one ingredient will be oatmeal. And I've made the oatmeal ahead of time because you do one cup of quick oats and one and a half cup boiling water and you let it sit about 20 minutes. So we have some oatmeal ready right here. So first we're gonna cream all of our sugars together. So we have a cup of brown sugar, a cup of white sugar, two beaten eggs, and we don't have a mixer here, so we're gonna do it by hand. And then we're gonna have a half a cup of shortening, but let me kinda get this going first. And I'll throw that shortening in there. Okay. And a half a cup of shortening. We're trying to downsize these to make them quick. Let's see how fast I can do it. But this is what I have here like a potato masher to get this going. Once I put the oatmeal in there, it'll kind of melt it. So I'm gonna just kind of go quick and hope it works. Okay, and then we're gonna put the oatmeal in. It's pretty warm, so it should melt everything in here. Once we get this mixed, then we add our flour mixture. So let's get this mixed real good. And I kinda look like putting half of my cinnamon in this. The recipe calls for a half a teaspoon, but I like cinnamon. Who doesn't in oatmeal? So it almost looks good enough to eat right now. It's just the oatmeal. Okay, that's ready to go. So then we're gonna get our dry ingredients together. And if you see me looking down, there's my recipe. One and a half cup sifted flour, but really I never sift my flour. But if you want to, go ahead. A uh, half a teaspoon of baking soda. That's supposed to be a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, but it's not. And a half a teaspoon of salt. And this is how I sift my flour. See there, sifted. Not the proper way, but there you go. And then I'm gonna pour this into here. This will end up being a really heavy cake. Heavy, heavy, heavy. And if this will make uh, like a nine inch pie pan with a little left over, or a cake pan, if you want a nine by 13, a nice heavy uh, high cake, you need to double this recipe. And also, no, that's it. So let's kinda, I think I'll do the spatula. Incorporate this together. And all we have to do is put it in the, the, the pan and put it in the oven. On 325, uh, and it, it rises a little bit. It doesn't rise like a, a normal cake, I don't think. I think because it's so heavy. Seriously, I used to take these to work in a big like lasagna pan and I, I'm telling you it weighed 15 pounds. It was so heavy. Okay, there we go. Now I have my, I believe this is a nine inch cake pan and I've uh, floured it, oiled and floured it so it won't stick, the old school style. 
and there'll probably be just a little bit left over. But like I said, it doesn't rise much, and I made one here a week ago, and I put it all the way to the top. And believe it or not, it didn't run over. But I'll, I'll play it safe this time, leave a little bit out. Because I have a little tiny ramekin, I'll put that little bit in. So I'm only going to put this much in it. And sometimes I like to kind of, just so it won't get that big bulge on top. And I'll shake it a minute. And I'm going to put it in the oven for 325. And the recipe called for 30 minutes, but it's never done in 30 minutes. Sometimes it takes up to an hour. So just slow. Toothpick. Do it a couple times because the oatmeal is moist. You might put the toothpick in and it looks wet. So do the little uh, touch test to see if it kind of springs back. Then you'll be for sure if it's done. So um, I'll put this in the oven and I'll see you in a little bit. We're going to put a caramelized topping on it. And I'll get my ingredients ready. And then I'll be back to you. See you in a little bit. Hi. Here's the best part of the cake right here. The reason why everybody loves this oatmeal cake is because of the topping. It's almost like a toffee and you have to broil it on top of the cake. But we have to kind of mix it together and then when the cake's done we put it on the cake. So while the cake's in the oven, um, I'll show you how to make the topping. Uh, I put in one half cup of butter and it's melting here. I put the butter in first and this is just low warm because the cake's going to be in there a while. So you just take your time with this. Uh, brown sugar packed. Everybody packs brown sugar and this is a, a half a cup of packed brown sugar. Ooh, I'm not used to this. Let me stir that up in there. And that's melting. And then it's a quarter cup of evaporated milk. This is a third cupper, so I just kind of eyeballed it. And you know what I don't have here? Is my vanilla. You put a half a teaspoon of vanilla in it. So I'm going to put my other ingredients. This is melting right now. Oh, there it is right there. Glenny, Glenny Penny found it for me. Vanilla, half a teaspoon. I'm just going to. You know, that's probably not a half a teaspoon, but that's what I'm putting in there. And, okay, the brown sugar and everything's melted. Good to go. Setting up for nice caramel. A cup of coconut. Oh, I didn't put that in. Let's stir this in. Here, let me see if I can get down in there so you can see it. And a lot of times, I want more, so I'll put that in, and then I'm thinking, you know what, I'll put another handful of coconut on it. And we're not going to boil this. This is going to stay real low. Just keep it on low heat on your stove. Uh, I'm sure, I've never had, but I guess you could probably put it in the microwave. You just want it smooth so when you spread it on your cake. And we had some blanched almonds here. You can use any kind of, actually, you can use any kind of nut. You can use a walnut, pecan. My favorite is an almond. Almond, almond, however you say it. So this is pretty much ready. It almost looks like a German chocolate top. But when you broil it, oh, it comes out like candy. See, it's getting a little stiff here, so we're going to put it back on the heat. And then you just kind of let it sit while your cake's cooking. And you just want it to be spreadable by the time uh, the cake comes out. And... Uh, we're gonna fight over it, I'm telling you. I would like to figure out, I guess I could put this on a cookie sheet and just make candy out of it. But the whole family loves it, and I know my cousin Bob and my cousin Tammy, they want the recipe, so now, guess what? They get the recipe. All my friends out there. And now I hope I have new friends, because I'm telling you, this is prize winning. Absolutely. Okay, we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, we're gonna check it. It should be done. Finger test, it's bouncing back, done. Let's 
So the <clears throat> bounce back test is good. So we're going to put our frosting on it. And I don't know why I was always taught as soon as it comes out of the oven, you put the frosting on it or the nut and coconut mixture or whatever you want to call it. Maybe it has something to do with sticking to the top of the cake. Oops. When you broil it. But I have made cupcakes and at one time I made two of these and I let them cool completely and then I put them back in and put the frosting and then I made a double layer cake out of it. But since I was always do it straight out of the oven, that's what I'm doing. But I like presentation. So if I was going to take this someplace and have it real pretty, <clears throat> I would probably cool it and then uh, flip it out into the pan and then put this topping on it, broil it, and then put it on a nice glass cake, you know, like a high cake pan to make it pretty. Because that's half of it right there, because if it looks good, you know, some stuff can look really good and you want it, but then when you taste it, it's not good. Presentation, presentation. That's the only thing about these, because we do them in these pans, just get a really nice crock cake crock, I guess you'd call it. Okay, I think that's probably about enough. And I have a little tiny one over there too that I had a little bit left over. I really think we, I made one of these well here about a week ago. And then my brother said, are you gonna film this? And I think he wants to put this in the freezer so for when I'm gone. <laughs> Okay, get that right to the edge. Don't want any cake showing through. That looks good just like that. I guess if you did it like this, this would be kind of like a German chocolate. But now I'm going to put it back in the oven and put it on broil. And so, Glenn will probably shut the camera off a minute so that we can put it on broil. And one thing, on broil, just like French bread, you do not walk away, because it'll only take about a minute, minute and a half. I'll just put it back on this. <clears throat> Once it's broiling. And all this work, you don't want this to burn. Okay, I'm gonna close it and put it on broil. If I know how to do this. Oh, it's on high, okay. We'll see in just a minute. We'll show you when it's crackling because it'll take a couple minutes. Is that one for your little friend? My little, yeah. For my little friend, Juanita, or this one's for Bob, my cousin that lives in Jamestown. If I could, Bob, I'll, but I'll eat it for you, okay? If I could put it in the mail and you could have it by tomorrow, you'd have your little cake. Okay, I'm gonna just kind of. It's done. And like I said, don't walk away, it'll burn. This is not really burnt, it's toasted really nicely. So we have to just wait a little bit because what'll happen is this will set up and it'll will be, see it's almost kind of, can you hear that little, sounds like I'm hitting this. This will get kind of, not quite as hard as toffee but it'll get candy-like. So we want it to sit just for five, 10 minutes 
and then it will be good to go. This I don't think we'll eat tonight, so I'm not going to cut it, but we have this little nice one right here that I'll let my brother eat in front of you because I really think he wanted this made so he can wrap it up and put it in the freezer while I'm gone because these freeze really well. And once you set them out after they're froze, this top will get hard again. It stays moist with all that oatmeal, and it's a perfect traveling cake. I'm telling you. So I don't know if we're coming back or not, but he's eyeballing this little tiny one here. So this is my famous oatmeal cake, my grandma's recipe. We'll talk to you later. Are we done? Here, move it around. I'll put my thumb right there. We're gonna eat it. Ooh, tear that up. It's gonna be too hot. It's like German chocolate. Mmm. -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need strong coffee or milk. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's mine.